When the MSF team arrived in the Philippines, they encountered a level of destruction rarely seen. For several days, it was extremely hard to access the worst affected areas because of the bad weather, extensively damaged airports and the influx of international aid. It took six days for the team to get to Tacloban. They met with massive destruction of homes and infrastructure and impassable roads. Just one of the area's 15 hospitals was still operational, but at a very much reduced capacity. The teams have since managed to set up projects on Leyte, Panay and Samar, some of the worst affected islands. Three weeks after the typhoon hit, over 200 MSF staff were working on the ground alongside several hundred Philippine colleagues. Mobile clinics enable the teams to assist the most isolated people while water and sanitation projects and the distribution of essential items, particularly hygiene kits, reduce the spread of disease and help families who lost everything in the storm. This is a big help because we have no money. We can't buy anything. It's all being given to us, to us and our children. It's help we really need. MSF is also running five hospitals, while health facilities damaged in the typhoon are repaired. In Tanoan, MSF has set up a pediatric and maternity ward in two inflatable tents. The town was almost totally wiped out by the typhoon and the tsunami that hit at the same time. We started work as quickly as we could. We set up at the town hall, which is right behind me, but its roof was torn off, so the rain gets in. Today we moved um, from inside where we were working in the Tanawan Municipal Hall and we moved out into this uh, newly set up MSF tents, which uh, has made a significant difference to our working conditions. Teams set up another tent structure in Tacloban, just next to Bethany Hospital, in which the operating theatres have now been repaired and are running again. Over 30 patients a day receive treatment in the emergency room. Infected wounds, respiratory infections and people with chronic illnesses without access to their treatment are what the teams see most. MSF is also concerned about a possible increase in cases of tetanus. Pregnant women are being cared for too. Romy is the hospital's first baby. He was born in the middle of the night on November the 26th. MSF launched its HIV AIDS treatment project in Malawi in 2001. 13 years on, MSF and the Ministry of Health now treat over 35,000 patients in the Chiradzulu district. In order to deliver quality care in a country severely affected by the pandemic and with a shortage of medical personnel, the teams initiated a process to decentralize treatment from district hospitals to health centers. Simplifying procedures, transferring skills within medical teams and reducing the frequency of consultations for stable patients were the first steps. A lot of fears that people had as far as ARV dispensation and HIV management is concerned. MSF has proved that this can be really handled by the least medically trained people. And ARVs and HIV is not that exceptional. MSF has shown that and has shown the world that task shifting is possible. Now in Chirazuru, nurses can initiate patients on ARVs. They are able to follow up patients even these patients who never in their life see the sewers, they continue to be seen by the nurses. Recent innovations have resulted in several laboratory tests now being available at health centers. This is the case of the viral load test, for example, that identifies patients whose treatment is failing. These tools provide results fast and enable the team to adjust treatments promptly. Since February, I've not been well. Headaches, fever, stomach aches. So I had a viral load test done. I'd been taking my medicine for a few years, so I didn't expect to have such a high viral load. I attended counselling for three months, then I was tested again. They said the viral load was reduced compared to my first test. I was very happy. After the first test, I'd lost hope. This streamlining allows the teams to treat 35,000 patients in the district of Chiradzulu alone. Meanwhile, the Malawi Ministry of Health has implemented HIV programs in other regions. 
MSF, whose project has demonstrated its effectiveness, does not intend to take the place of the government. The teams are continuing to simplify and decentralise treatment in partnership with the Ministry of Health in order to eventually hand over its activities. The situation in Buka reflects the chaos that is rife throughout the country. Violence, killings, torched homes, people forced to flee repeatedly. Fighting between armed groups is taking on an intra-community and sectarian character. We are all Central Africans. We grew up, went to school, spent our childhoods together. Is this going to cause divisions between us? MSF treats the wounded, civilians and fighters alike, regardless of which side they're on. The most serious cases in Buka had to be transferred to the hospital in Batangafo, a hundred kilometers away. But the team is concerned for people who have fled from the town and disappeared into the bush. We took refuge in the bush and we made a little tent to live in by the river. We lived like animals and we had nothing to protect ourselves against the mosquitoes. I fled with my family. We stayed there for two weeks before we could go back to our village. One in ten Central Africans have fled their homes to escape the violence. In the bush, they have no shelter, bed nets, clean water, food or health care. Many of them, mainly children, suffer from malaria, diarrhea and respiratory infections brought on by their living conditions. MSF provides medical care to around 400,000 people, proving that in spite of the security risks, it is possible to deliver aid in the country. Given the scale of the ever-increasing needs, more humanitarian organisations and UN agencies in particular must take action and fast. Many Syrian refugees are living amongst the local population in the north of Jordan, and particularly here in Irbid. In mid-October, MSF opened a maternity ward here in cooperation with the Ministry of Health, because Jordanian health facilities are simply unable to cope with the massive influx of patients. And refugees who aren't registered with the UN are not entitled to free health care, which often poses a real problem for all these families. So they are spread all over Irbit, but Irbit is a big city with many little uh, villages. So they are not in the city, I mean in the main city. This is the problem. And they have uh, uh, problems to get in here, even the transportation. And even they can't hear about us. And when they go to any hospital, they don't give them a place to go to. They just tell them, you have to pay or either you go away. At the MSF clinic, refugees have access to a maternity unit and free antenatal care. A paediatric unit will open shortly. This man left Dera with his pregnant wife. Frankly, the only reason I came here is because my wife is pregnant. And as you know, there's not much left back in Syria. No health care, no doctors. I heard people talk about an organization called MSF. They provide health care to Syrians here. The service and doctors are very good. Over 50 women have already given birth at the clinic, and every day some 20 more come for consultations. This number is set to increase rapidly, as MSF informs local communities and health facilities about the clinic. Kawagosk in Erbil province in northern Iraq. Syrian families have been arriving in substantial numbers at this refugee camp since last August. On the 15th of September, MSF opened a clinic right in the middle of Kawagosk camp. It's a fairly recent camp where there are 12,400 refugees. The MSF clinic provides primary health care and also offers consultations with a psychologist. In October, the medical staff saw almost 4,000 people. One third were children. In terms of medical activities, we give around 150 consultations a day, mainly seeing cases of diarrhea and respiratory infections, which will certainly get worse during the winter months. 
et des diarrhées. MSF is also treating patients via its mobile clinics in other camps in the area, like Kushtapa and, in a few weeks' time, Darashakran. As winter approaches, MSF fears that the refugees' health will deteriorate still further. Mumen is waiting in front of MSF's post-operative clinic for his appointment with a physiotherapist. He was hospitalized in January 2013 after suffering severe burn injuries and comes here for treatment every day. We are the only clinic that provides uh, post-operative care for pain patients, meaning that we are providing wound care and physiotherapy and medical care for such uh, type of uh, injuries. Physiotherapist Abd El Hamid starts by massaging Momen's scarred skin so that it maintains its elasticity and doesn't retract. Then there are exercises to help him build up his muscles. Post-operative follow-up helps our patients recover full use of their limbs and resume everyday activities. In January 2013, Momen was on his roof, refilling the generator with fuel when it caught fire. After suffering burns to 65% of his body, he spent over two months in a coma and had around 10 operations. He couldn't walk when he arrived at the clinic, but he's now making good progress and the physiotherapist says he'll probably be able to stop the sessions next spring.